people see us as some kind of circular firing squad. They're all lined up in this big circle, just shooting at each other. The sheer incompetence of this government. More uncertainty, more bitterness, and more rancor. As absurd as a one-man tug of war, Brexit turning Westminster inside out. But how is this political pantomime making the British look elsewhere? What worries the rest of the world more than Brexit is that sense that, that Britain is somehow losing its kind of treble A rating for competence. You have been the foreign policy advisor to three former British prime ministers. How would you be advising the prime minister today? Um, I think if I was in there now, um, I'd be counselling a certain level of humility about the story we tell the world about what we're going through. I think it's a mistake to try to pretend that we can do everything at the moment, that we can have the same sort of global perspective while we're going through this very, very difficult, corrosive national debate. But once upon a time, Britain commanded an empire on which they say the sun never set. Until it did. You're a scholar of a map like this, the world showing the British Empire. What did a map like that mean to those that you were doing business with as a diplomat? The reality as well, when you have come from a position when, when as you say, the, the map has been coloured pink, when you had a, a statue in the world like that, is that diplomacy does get harder. You know, diplomacy is always easy when you're seen as a country on the up. You know, leaders answer your phone, you get the meetings eat more easily, people listen to what you have to say, they want to meet you, they want to have deals with you. If there is a perception of decline, and this is where we have to be so careful with the, not necessarily Brexit, but the debate, the rancor around Brexit, then diplomacy gets way, way harder. As the largest empire in history withered, new countries emerged, like here, the United Arab Emirates, once the Trucial States, in 1971. You know, there was a real sense of understanding between those early explorers and, and the peoples of this uh, region. And then it, in the era when, when the countries in this region were being formed, were coming together through diplomacy, you know, when the UAE was being established, you know, Britain was clearly you know, a very senior international player at that stage. Tom, the problem as I see it from where we are sitting here is that Britain has lost its luster. We have to be humble enough to recognize that the show we're putting on at the moment is not going to impress everyone. I think it's even more important that we really invest hard in those, those relationships and, and reassure people that we are going to be back. You know, we will still be that Security Council power. We will still be spending 2% on defence. Some call it you know, gunship diplomacy. Does Britain still have that power? I mean, Britain still does have some serious gunboats. It still has that 2% we invest uh, in defence. But the thing is, the reality in the 21st century is that no country is judged anymore on how many people it can kill. And that's probably a good thing. Britain rushes troops into the latest trouble zone of the Near East. Britain's nostalgia for itself didn't fade easily, and imperial habits lingered. Is Brexit the worst self-inflicted mess-up since the ham-fisted intervention Suez. I don't think that this will be seen as uh, a crisis in the way that Suez uh, is seen as a crisis. I do think that we will find a, a better way of telling our story to the world, really highlighting what we do brilliantly as a country. Do we think the French Revolution was a success or a failure? It's too soon to tell. Do we think Brexit's a success or a failure? We won't know for a hundred years. On our way out, there was just time to get another opinion. What do you think of Brexit? He doesn't know either, I don't think.